You want to hear the uh, the one negative comment we got about our Demon School trailer reveal? Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, why not? Enough with the bland Persona ripoffs. We get it. You didn't know Persona existed until Persona 5. You're trying to copy the calendar. You're even copying the fonts, dot, dot, dot. You can't be Persona. Oh, no. How about coming up with your own ideas and doing your own tactical RPG? Oh, no. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing in there that's correct, which is uh, which is great. I, re- I replied with LOL uh, because there's, uh, there's, there's literally not a line of that that is correct. Um, we're not even trying to be Persona. Most typical comments I get tell me to go back to Fortnite, that there's no way I could possibly know anything about retro games. There's no way I'm old enough to know anything about anything older than the uh, Xbox One or whatever. Like, it's it's so weird. It's, it's pretty weird. Where do people get those ideas? Yeah. You know what he was probably thinking of, that commenter? He was probably thinking about your prior work with the Jonathan Persona Kim. Oh, that's what he was thinking about. Yeah. Uh, I can't be him. That Yeah, that's what he's talking about. You yeah, can't, can't be Persona. I can't be Persona. He's, uh, he's his own character. I've recently replayed Personas 1 and 2, uh, and let me tell you um, that they're real good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell time. This is episode 240 of Insert Credit, a video game talk show featuring a panel of experts with a sworn duty to thoroughly address each topic presented to them within six minutes or suffer the indignity of a horrible buzzer. I'm Alex Jaffe, and my favorite video game dinosaur is the blue plesiosaurus in Hazy Maze Cave from Super Mario 64. Uh, 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 I'm Tim Rogers, and my favorite video game dinosaur is... I'm just, I gotta say, it's, uh, it's, uh, the Raptor from Jurassic Park Rampage Edition for the second Genesis. Nice. That's off the top of my head, because that dinosaur runs real fast and is real floppy and is not super fun to control, and it does a cool, like, rotation animation where it faces the camera when you turn, and, uh, that's a real bad video game, uh, though all the kids at school pretended it was really good. Thank you. It's got a really good waterfall effect later on. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of cool stuff in that game. I'm Brandon Sheffield. My favorite uh, video game dinosaur. Uh, the first one that came to my mind is the the first boss of Symphony of the Night. The dinosaur person thing that has a has a spear. Like it's not enough to be a oh, dinosaur yeah. person. It also needs a spear and get carried around by a by a bat demon. I like that guy. I think that's a uh, dinosaur as well. I think they're both. Oh wait, yeah, yeah. Okay. That one's a demon. Yeah, there's a demon and a dinosaur. Yeah, yeah. D&D. Mm. That's where it came from. Joining us this week, Daily Beast Deputy Editor and our substitute mandated Frank, Allegra Frank is here. Hello. Hi, I'm Allegra. My favorite video game dinosaur is Yoshi. I don't... Sure. <laughs> I feel like that's oh, wow. such an easy no, it's a good choice. Question. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's not my favorite, what, but... uh, What kind of dinosaur <laughs> is Yoshi? Okay, so I looked this up while you guys were talking. He's a T-Rex. Yeah. And he is... He's a T-Rex. A Yoshi. Oh, is nice. What I found. <laughs> it just says he is a sapient species of omnivorous dinosaur. I know that Yoshi is short for Yoshi Sorty Munchakupas, but I don't yeah. know anything about his particular species beyond that. Yoshi Sorty Munchakupa, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I remember that. I, I decided to. Uh, I, I I I thought of Yoshi for a split second when you said my favorite video game dinosaur, and I was like, God can't say Yoshi. And then I struggled <laughs> to think of a dinosaur that no one. Uh, I, I I struggled to concoct in my mind the picture of a video dinosaur the the provenance of which no one could question <laughs> so like the, it, the velociraptor in jurassic park rampage mode definitely a velociraptor let's just say yoshi's a velociraptor too that was my insidious uh agenda in choosing a more obscure dinosaur from the mario series mm-hmm. i mean, think well now I can't say Yoshi, yeah, but Allegra yeah. just went for it, and I respect that. I just went for it. That's good, that's uh, good. You gotta go with your gut. I'm honest. Uh, in fact, you're in the lead right now. What I haven't mentioned is that every single episode of Insert Credit has a designated winner when I tally up who did the best job at the end of the show, and the prize for winning the episode is that you get to come up with a question for next week's episode. Tim, you won our episode last week. Would you like to take your question now or later? Um, Let's do it later. <laughs> All right. In that case, previously on Insert Credit, 
in episode 228, Should I Drink This? Uh-huh. We discussed oh, no. adapting video games into non-interactive mediums using only the game's lore and disregarding the gameplay entirely. Uh-huh. But how does that work for games where the story is affected by your choices in the game itself? Does adapting a choice-driven game into a film or television series cheapen player agency? Huh. I don't know. It depends. It's an interesting question. First of all, Netflix wants to do those choice video like basically fmv type weird things anyway i I still never watched that one that got yelled about and clapped they got clapped about on twitter for what like (laughs) two or two days yeah two and a half minutes yeah people being very happy uh saying yay a lot i think but i don't know i don't feel like i need i feel like i have for example player agency when i watch orson wells's f for fake uh because i I can decide what I'm thinking about and what I uh, what I believe is occurring in the, in the thing, and mm-hmm. I think that's a form of of agency that you can have if you if you make something cleverly enough. So I I don't think it necessarily does. Yeah, I mean, like if you, if you a- adapted the the Walking Dead Telltale games into a Walking Dead film, I think it would be I think it'd be fine. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them to do that to <laughs> to to like to announce that the next the next season of The Walking Dead the final season uh is just an adaptation of the video game. How many times is The Walking Dead the final season going to be on TV? I don't, <laughs> I don't understand it. I feel like we're up to like six final seasons now. It's turning out like Final Fantasy over here. I mean, I, I I could talk for hours about how I think books are basically interactive. Um, reading a novel, there is an interactive element in there, whether you want there to be or not. Uh, I will not uh, expand on that right now. Just throwing that out there. I'll expand on that later. Though it's uh, what about video games that cheapen <laughs> themselves uh, by having player choices? I always like to think of Bioshock, where you have the choice to uh, uh, kill a little girl or not kill a little girl. Right, like uh, over and over again, and uh, the game, when you get to the end of Bioshock, big twist for anybody who hasn't played Bioshock. It's fifteen years old game. Uh, Netflix is making. Are they making a TV series or a movie out of it? I don't know. A big twist. The big twist of Bioshock is that the the guy in your head, who the guy in your communicator, who's guiding you through uh, the world of the game, is actually mind controlling you. He has mind control manipulated you into coming to this place and uh, uh, doing a particular job. Uh, which uh, casts, uh, you know, it kind of uh, sheds light on, ooh, this is the player. Uh, the, the, the main character is being controlled by a, ostensibly a video game player. Uh, is that me? Am I the bad guy? You know, all of this stuff that kind of gets wrapped up in that sort of cheap little tin can moment there at the end. Um, how, like, though it's like, oh, was he mind controlling me to, uh, I don't know, shoot this trash can for a couple of times or, <laughs> or, you know, was, was he mind controlling me to jump up and down on this box? Would you kindly eat these potato chips straight from the garbage? Yeah, straight from the garbage. Yeah, very first from thing, the toilet. Very first thing I did. Was he mind controlling <laughs> me to, uh, to, uh, to fire my shotgun into a toilet? Right? Like, like, why was he doing that? That's weird. Uh, but then again, you know, I guess I am the player of the game. Okay, you know what? I just, in, in saying that out loud, I actually now think it's a little bit more clever than I've ever given it credit for. Because, you know, why am I telling him to do that? Right? Why am I telling my guy to fire his shotgun into a <laughs> toilet? Right? Like, well, it's time to take a nap! Right? And then you just, like, right? Is, uh, I mean, wouldn't you be having fun? Wouldn't you kindly be having a good time uh, if you were mind controlling a, a dude? Right in an underwater poet's utopia, or what, or whatever it is, whatever god darn trash that guy, can, like whatever that place is supposed to be, um, like uh, uh, just Django Reinhardt and uh, you know Anne Rand, Atlas shrugging all over the place, you know. I'm more thinking along the lines of say like a Dragon Age or a Mass Effect, where your choices are supposed to massively influence this universe. They're supposed to massively massively affect it. Yeah. yeah, how are, how are oh, you supposed God. to tell a story in that world when every player's experience of that world is different? Well, then you just tell one story. I've been thinking about this a lot, honestly, because like I've been, <laughs> I've been playing Life is Strange, which is you know the newer one, the True Colors one. But I know that they wanted to make like the first Life is Strange a show or something. And something that I did in that game that 
I feel like no one else I know did was like, there was that one, did you guys play that game? Am I the only one? I would not be ashamed. I I played Life is Strange. I, I played it for two hours. Okay, so if you remember, Tim, then there was this character that you, like, went to school with, and she threatened to kill herself by, like, jumping off the roof of the school Mm -hmm, or something. mm -hmm, Right. And everyone I know was like, oh, that part was so easy. Obviously, I stopped her from jumping off the roof. But I don't know what I did, but this girl jumped off the roof. And that, like, dramatically changed my you know, impression of the game and my time with the game because I had a chance to save this girl and I failed to because I didn't press the right button or whatever. And I know that that is something that really affected me, but didn't really affect the story too materially. But that's like so intrinsically tied to my experience of that game that adapting it, yeah, to a show or a movie or whatever they were planning on doing, if it's still happening, they're going to have to make a choice one way or the other. For most people, I think they never had that moment where they didn't save that character. So I feel like they might just go in that direction. But for me, like, that's not the same story anymore. So I'm very much like, I'm curious if they ever do this show or whatever, how I will still react to it, because that was so crucial to my understanding and experience of the game. Do you think that uh, witnessing a different experience of the game could be intriguing, though? Because I I could see, like, say it was Mass Effect or whatever, and and you went all Paragon, and then the show goes all Renegade, and then you'd be like, oh, so that's what would happen. I mean, I wonder if that would, if that could be interesting in that way or not. Yeah. Or maybe the way to go is to create like kind of a third path that doesn't conform to anybody's playthrough. That uh, it just presents, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it well, presents yeah. this entirely different course of decisions you couldn't make. Like the Halo show. Right. Tell a new story in the universe. So one thing they can't do is they can't, they can't affordably make multiple versions of every episode uh, so that the players can watch Paragon version or Renegade version. Right. You know, I mean, replacing, you know, double filming key scenes or whatever. They can't exactly, on any sort of a reasonable production timeline, pull off a, a Twitter polls or whatever where it's like vote does shepherd go renegade and this uh the shepherd was faced with a tough choice at the end of this week's episode uh does shepherd go renegade also is shepherd a girl or is shepherd a guy there's a, there's a potentially pretty interesting thing to be done now that people are apparently all over multiverses for some reason mm. is that you could have two different universes two different shepherds doing two different paths and then they have to converge at some point, and then they affect each other in the narrative. I think you'd just make Shepherd twins, is what you'd do. <laughs> yeah. A boy Shepherd and a girl Shepherd. Well, shepherd and Shepherd are here. Well, Captain Shepherd and uh, <laughs> uh, co captains, Shepherd and Shepherd on the bridge or whatever. It's a, it's a private detective agency, Shepherd and Shepherd. Yeah, shepherd and Shepherd uh, co detectives, right? There you go. There's your episode title Shepherd and Shepherd co-detectives whenever i'm playing that game i'm trying real hard to be the shepherd (laughs) i'm trying real hard to be the shepherd Uh, next question oh that was a good one i was having a good time with that Uh, (laughs) you want to one-up it well no no i I, no there's no reason to one-up that one we'll come back to it at some point my next question is where does the kirby franchise go from here i think you'd make a good a, a good a good uh, TV show. Uh, that's a joke. I was going to just uh, keep talking about TV shows. Where's the Kirby <laughs> franchise go from here? Well, Kirby is just the character Nintendo slaps on all of their half-baked prototypes that Shigeru Miyamoto declares unworthy of Mario, right? Isn't that just basically what Kirby is? <laughs> no, not right. What? <laughs> They're just like, ah, just make it a Kirby game. I don't know. They are so functionally different, Tim. I am so offended. I'm looking around at my Kirby-filled home, which is not even a joke, and I cannot believe. No, so I think Kirby is sort of confusing for Nintendo yeah. in that they, yeah, but I don't think it's like a, a testing ground. I think it's more that they, you know, Kirby has this very specific skill set and also this particular aesthetic where it's like little kids want to play as Kirby Mm -hmm. but you also have like you know older fans who want to play as Kirby so there is that push and pull tension of how difficult do we make this Kirby adults as they're called right (laughs) 
<laughs> We're all Kirby adults. The ones who pay $3,000 a night to stay at the Kirby hotels. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Kirby has done like weird experimental things like Kirby Air Ride, which I think is an incredibly underrated, influential game. I like Kirby Air Ride. That's where I'd like to see it go, But but, but But Shigeru Miyamoto uh, would have declared it unworthy of Mario. Um, I mean, that's... Right, but I... Yeah, that's fair. I mean, yeah, that's, that's all I'm saying. I, I know where it's going to go, personally. As as the show gets, I mean, not the show, as the uh, the game gets older and the demographic ages up, they're going to do a game about uh, Kirby and his wife. And Kirby's always getting into these weird situations where, they, where he's not communicating right. And, and it gets into this awkward situation and he's trying to reboot Seinfeld and it's called Kirby Your Enthusiasm. Larry David divorced <laughs> his wife no. on Curb Your Enthusiasm like 15 <laughs> years ago. Brandon, want to feel old? It hasn't been about his marriage uh, for a long time. We're starting at the beginning. The reboot, yeah. Oh, you're still, well, that's that's yeah. good. You know, why not? Why not? I want to know what Kirby's wife is like. Well, it's, she's going to be Miss Kirby. She's going to be Kirby with the bow in her in, on, on her but, head, but is, basically. But is Kirby a boy? I thought, uh, uh, like... So, like, I, I thought Kirby was gender neutral, so Kirby's partner might also be. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Uh, did they say that? I don't know. I don't know if they said that. It was my assumption. I perceive Kirby as a, it's just, I don't know, I hear the name Kirby. I think of Kirby Puckett from the Minnesota Twins. Probably because of the <laughs> American box art with his angry eyebrows it makes him makes him a boy there. Yeah, yeah, they, they boyed him I'm up. I'm pretty sure Kirby is married to Waddle D. I think that's canon. There's so many Waddle Ds, though. So it's just like a harem. One could argue there are so many Kirby's. Oh. Yeah, Kirby can do the the whole the whole Kage Bunshi and Touche. We, we've seen multiple Kirby. Is this going to be multiverse too? God damn it! It's all multiverse, baby. Brandon talks about the Kirby uh, demographic aging up, but you know who? What other demographic ages up is the Pokemon demographic. Oh yeah, but they're always making new five year olds. There's new five year olds just. Uh, just uh, you know, materializing into existence every. I don't think that's true. Every couple of minutes, so <laughs> they keep making true. Pokemon for them. <laughs> the Pokemon games are. I mm-hmm. learned maybe I don't know if it's the hardest way, but I learned a pretty hard way that the Pokemon games are for children, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, I learned this because I I made a couple of YouTube videos about Pokemon games during a day job that I had a while back, and the comments were absolutely just fire hose kiddie pool filled with uh pokemon adults who were complaining that the game was too childish and i was like just thinking these people looked at pokemon i was like these are definitely children's (laughs) video games and it's cool you know there's adults who like them and there's there have been adults begging for a pokemon mmo since like what since like pokemon gold or whatever since like way back when and it's there are always little tiny children Jibuses, as we call them, who don't even know what an MMO is and just like the Pokemon when it comes out, right? Uh, but I mean, there was there were so many adults that were just, I mean, hair pullingly angry at the latest Pokemon game, that Sword and Shield. They're just so angry. They were ripping their own teeth out of their heads about that <laughs> game. Um, and I I got the I think the biggest torrent of hate mail I've ever gotten in my life. Because I made a video that was like, I'm having a good time with this game. Um, and it was very strange. Um, I don't imagine there's too many people like that for Kirby. Right. Uh, because Kirby, the Kirby audience is okay with the games not necessarily being uh, sophisticated, uh, you know, thought-provoking, dark, gritty Batman Begins reboots or whatever. That that newest one is pretty pretty weird, though. I keep saying I'm going to finally get into Kirby, and I, I keep not doing it. Because I, I just want it to be a little, I don't know. Cheaper, because I because I don't know if I'm gonna like it for real. The new one was good, bro. It's what they say. The new one's good. I should probably play it. Yeah, the new one. Yeah. Uh, I I bought the new one and I just I never played it because I'll, I'll play it eventually because I've just been uh, you know playing too much other nonsense. If you get want to get into Kirby, play the the Kirby uh, the Kirby's Dreamland for NES. Play the Kirby uh, Kirby's Dreamland on Super NES. Yeah. And then just work your way through those games. I'd need to already have them, would be the thing. It's a very low bar event. I, I joke about them being games judged by Shigeru Miyamoto as unworthy of Mario, but, um, <laughs> like, they, I mean, there is this story. I, I mean, I'm not the biggest Nintendo lorist here, though I know that Nintendo is prototyping and working on various games at all times, and a Kirby game is usually not a Kirby game from the beginning. They 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 put onto the game the Kirby veneer 
at a certain point uh, in its production, they decide, yes, this is a Kirby game. And it gets anointed by the, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the, the Kirby ritual or whatever. I don't know what they do in that basement over there. Though, basically, <laughs> if you get into all these old Kirby games and you take a little journey through them, Brandon Sheffield, you will get to see, basically, all the cool game design stuff that happens at Nintendo. Um, that does not get funneled into the very, very strict gummy bear mold of Mario or Zelda. So it's fun. Guess we'll see. I was going to ask this later in the show, but now that we're Pokemon adjacent, I might as well address it here. Uh, something we haven't discussed at all since Insert Credit returned in 2020 mm. is the phenomenon of Pokemon Go. Oh, Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go just pawned in Big Game of Life. What do you think's been happening in that game since I played it in summer of 2016 and never again? See, I feel like we did talk about it a little bit because oh, maybe I didn't tell this story, but I thought I told the story about uh, how our programmer Shane Marks played Pokemon Go for like a few months because um, right outside of his house window is like a Pokestop because it's it's like some sort of a religious icon there's like a some sort of fancy irish rock that's out there that's a, a thing and so um the blarney stone he lives in a pretty small village it's one of those stones it's not a blarney i'm pretty sure it's a moon stone does he live in kark <laughs> pretty he, he he actually lives outside of kark guy <laughs> said kark also <laughs> um, he lives in in um uh wa- water waterford i forget what it's called um he, oh yeah yugle um anyway he's 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 there in his house, and there his his brother is playing Pokemon Go, and his brother's friends are playing Pokemon Go, and they know everyone in the village that's playing it, and mm-hmm. uh, and he Shane pretty, uh, specifically chose the yellow one because he knew that everybody else was like blue and red, and uh, he kept just any time someone would take that gym, he would take it back. Or it was a gym actually. He would take it back as a yellow player from inside the house. They kept being like, "Who's who's yellow? I don't even know anyone who's yellow. Who's taking this gym?" Uh, and they never figured it out. So uh, hopefully, there's still some of that kind of nonsense going on. The trash can outside my old apartment was a uh, was a poke stop. Wow, it's <laughs> pretty good. I enjoyed that. Oh, well, that rules! Again. I've been like, I have this whole Twitter list dedicated to like Pokemon news from back in my like. Pokemon professional Pokemon reporter days. So I constantly am keeping up and everyone is always mad about Pokemon Go. That is like the one game every single person on this feed of like, you know, I probably see like 200 tweets a day or whatever in this feed. I would say 60% of them are people being angry about something related to Pokemon Go. Is it people playing it or people mad about it? I mean, I don't know if they're playing it. I okay. I mean, they're people who feel very strongly about it specifically. They're probably they probably play it to the extent where they know what's going on, but I feel like they're just like mad because Pokemon fans like to be mad. So there's constantly like a new update and then everyone will riot and it dominates this feed for three days. And then Niantic walks back the update and then everyone is mad because they didn't walk it back far enough or whatever. So whatever is happening, which is kind of hard to discern because I'm mostly just seeing people being like, fuck Niantic, Pokemon, seriously. I, I just is making people mad. All, all the time. Man, can you imagine working on something like that where, like, theoretically, I guess it, that story came out about Fallout 76 recently and how, like, everybody working on it hated working on it. Nobody was enjoying their time. Everybody was crunching and mm-hmm. missing their families and stuff. And then the game comes out and everyone is just publicly crapping on it. And they're like, this game sucks. Like, what is it like to work on Pokemon Go and have the the public face of it just be dunked on constantly whereas people playing it are just playing it happily and not they're not like yelling about it (laughs) right i see people that are still playing it they just like they'll show a picture and and it'll i won't understand what it is because i don't play pokemon go and they'll be like (laughs) look at this (laughs) it's like i don't know know what that is but uh when i was in um niles the hollywood 2 of the silent film era where uh, Charlie Chaplin made his films and had a big film studio. Uh, Niles is now a town with 
a lot of antique shops and a silent film museum and stuff like that. Multiple times that I've been there, there's been like a group of 10, 20, 30 Pokemon Go players just like wandering around for some event that has occurred there. And they, and they all seem happy. The last time I saw it was probably a year ago. And uh, it ha- it was like old grandpas and young kids and like ex- extremely racially diverse group of people all hanging out together and trying to catch some kind of rare Pokemon, I assume. But uh, that was, I mean, it's nice to see see a group of people outside they they all don't know each other but they have this one thing in common and they're hanging out and being nice to each other yeah so i hope that that's what it's all about still going forward in the in the actual game i just i don't, I don't know anything about pokemon go uh I, I i i mean i know what it is uh you know, obviously though i have no personal experience with it uh i did live across the street from a park that was some kind of a pokemon gym and all the kids from the neighborhood would walk over and, and just be out there at night. I recall seeing on Twitter this uh, this Japanese man has 14 phones and <laughs> rides around on a bike and he has more Pokemon than anyone in the world or whatever. And uh, I don't really know what's up with it recently. So I, I typed um, Pokemon Go into the search box on Twitter, yeah. clicked on the top tweet, and the top tweet is, hey gamers, want to play Pokemon Go with me? <laughs> Uh, blushing smiley face, kissing smiley face, and it's a picture of a girl, uh, you know, a, a gamer girl looking girl. Um, <laughs> you know, she's scantily clothed. I'm zooming into the bookshelf behind her. She's got, is that Death Note? Um, she's got some anime figurines on a bookshelf, but uh, it's a, a conventionally attractive gamer girl. I opened the thread <laughs> and I scrolled down. <laughs> to to the second tweet in the thread and she's just completely naked um <laughs> and that's there you go that's it yeah thank you that's all the right end of my story that's uh, the end of my story <laughs> oh my God. if you were in charge of booking saturday night live and had a rolodex full of video game characters who would you call the guest host nice i get marcus phoenix to get on there I think he'd be good at the kind of like the. Oh, uh, man. I just realized I was I was muted when I said Pokemon Go only fans, which I'm I'm <laughs> sad about. Uh, but uh, with with this question, are we operating on the presumption um, Saturday Night Live is something relevant to enjoy? Are we operating under the assumption that it is um, dumb and boring, and we should make it that more that way? You're operating under the assumption that it's a thing that exists that has celebrity hosts. Uh, right. I, I was going to say Marcus Phoenix would be a good uh, facsimile if everyone remembers George Steinbrenner uh, hosted yeah. Saturday Night Live at one point and did like a terrible job. Uh-huh. I think it would be real. I think Marcus Phoenix would do like a similar. Uh, like bad job, or like parodying himself. The famous uh, Steven Seagal sketch. Do you all know about that? I was thinking about that. I was going to yeah, say yeah. exactly that. There we go. Is there <laughs> anybody else I'm missing? That would be that would be funny. Uh, uh, I think Marcus Phoenix. I think like the dopier video game characters awkwardly hosting would be really funny. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I was gonna go. I was thinking Steven Seagal. So I was gonna say like <laughs> Big Boss or something. Oh yeah. Yeah, some like buff, meaty kind of guy who's, well, I was going to say he's kind of cute, but Big Boss is not kind of cute. But like someone, you know, like Solid Snake, someone from that franchise who is an action guy and he's likable. So people want to see him, but he's actually mm-hmm. not really good at this, you know, the the job of hosting. And so he is mostly playing himself. Are you saying that Big Boss isn't cute, but his exact genetic identical <laughs> clone is cute? <laughs> <laughs> it's different ages, Jerry. Certain nature, not nurture, or nurture, not nature. <laughs> exactly. Cute is more than just an appearance. Oh, yeah, it's uh, there's a there's a lot there's a lot going on uh, in the development of a person. I don't know, right? I don't, there, that's my definitive statement on the on on that. I mean, right. when he was naked, snake though, it, was he any less cute than solid snake? I think yes. Yeah. Because Solid Snake has Otacon there mm. to just I- imbue him with inherent cuteness, their interactions that Naked Snake never got to enjoy. Yeah. There's no one that Naked Snake got to play off that made him like exhibit cuteness. Naked Snake had like a mother figure mentor 
right? So mm-hmm. he's he just comes across as a little bit of a mama's boy. So he's <laughs> he's kind of like infantilized in that sort of way, whereas Solid Snake was just a you know, minutes into the game, he's bragging about smuggling his cigarettes in and his stomach. You know, he's doing stuff like that. That shot you gave me suppressed my stomach acids or whatever. And yet Otacon is a mama's boy. And is Otacon not kind of cute in his own right? I don't know. He's very cute to me. Yeah. Yeah. But also Naked Snake is a mama's boy, but also- oh, wait, were you talking about Hal Emmerich? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you know him by Hal Emmerich. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel like I, I feel like I worked with that guy at an office in San Francisco. I would say Naked Snake is both a mama's boy, but like in an he's like in an Oedipal way, though. Mm, like right, he's also right, very right. horny, and I don't find horniness particularly cute. You know, Solid Snake is also sort of horny, but not as overtly as Naked Snake is. Yeah, I see that. All right. What about Old Snake? I think Old Snake would be the best uh, Saturday Night Live host. <laughs> Uh, yes <laughs> yes yeah i think i think he would actually be the best um and he would be bad but uh, what would what would the sketches be it would probably be he's like someone's grandpa and it's like a bar mitzvah or something and he has to give a speech but he keeps like mumbling or falling asleep and everyone's like oh grandpa and then grandpa pulls a gun out at the end or something because everyone's making fun of him i think uh i think uh old snake could play my my Saturday Night Live sketch idea, which is like uh, uh, in 1980s Don Draper, where he's pitching like 1980s commercials. This is my Saturday Night Live sketch idea that I've passed along to a friend <laughs> who might or might not be able to do something with it. I just want to see Don <laughs> Draper pitching uh, pitching like the Juicy Fruit jingle. Um, right? I like that the idea is have Old Snake be Don Draper instead yeah. of John Hamm be Don Draper. Yeah, that would be good. All right. What I do with Old Snake is I do one of those like celebrity late night talk show sketches they like to do. Uh, mm-hmm. But his entire persona as a talk show host is repeating what the guests just said. Like, yeah, oh, an anti-freezing peptide. I had a real crazy weekend. A crazy weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, would, yeah. Be, that would be the whole joke. Ah, yeah, that's good. I like that. All right. Brandon, th- this next question is mainly for you. Hey, that's me. I'm me. Allegra and Tim, feel free to chime in. I have a question about Demon School. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. I know about that. Are demons cool? Are demons cool? Yeah, that's my question. Yeah, they're not. I mean, they, no, they're not. <laughs> they're not. Um, they're, they're, they're bad. There's a couple that are okay, but they're all bad to some ext- extent. The, the, the demons are like, they're kind of like a... In a way, a personification of uh, tech pros gentrifying a neighborhood in in <laughs> in this game. I mean, they they kill you and and take your memory and stuff. But I mean, you know, it's similar to uh, what tech bro types do, except they uh, they kill the culture and take away the memory of how a place used to be cool. Yeah, demons are not cool. There's one demon that'll be your friend, sort of, who will sell you items and stuff. But that guy's not cool either. We can we can expand it beyond my video game though, and uh, I think demons in Shin Megami Tensei are cool. Some of them. I like the ones that make big long typos. <laughs> <laughs> I like the ones that say say goofy stuff and uh, say bro all the time, etc. I don't know. I think I think those demons are. I don't know. Is cool the right word? They're fun. I think they're fun. Demons fun. The end. <laughs> demons fun. Demons fun. I remember as a as a child being told uh, that uh, uh, demons uh, were bad uh-huh. and that they would get you uh, because they're satanic. Yeah, they, but they hadn't gotten you yet, I guess, or have yeah. I was taught during my year in seminary that the most potent time of the week for demons was Wednesday night because mm-hmm. it is the furthest time in the week. From, from the Sabbath. The Sabbath. From the holy day. Oh. Yeah. That's when they get strongest. That's fun. Yeah. So if so if you're gonna mess with demons, don't mess with them on Wednesday night. Man, that's a it's a good good time to put uh, mini bosses into my video game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Maybe for the next one. But like so how does that work? The Sabbath is charging in both directions. It can't it's not like the Sabbath happens and then there's a petering off until the next one. It's like It's like a cycle. They're like yeah, but but they're like each of them has has a charge point that that has a cone of success around it. It's it's Got not sundown on one day to uh, uh, sundown on on the other. 
basically. Yeah. You know, it's it's a 20, I don't know. I guess it makes sense. Is there is there like a moment of, of Sabbath quickening that occurs? That's like an exact uh, a moment. A judge's gavel bangs. Yes. And goes. A, <laughs> Actually, yeah. yes. Uh, what is what is that moment? The exact minute of sunset on Friday evening. Oh, uh, yeah. Is oh. when the spirit of Sabbath enters the mortal plane. Uh, okay, nice. okay, and then it leaves, and it exits on nightfall the following day. Night, uh, yes, yeah, uh, sunset or nightfall, or enters on sunset, and it exits on the following day on nightfall. So it's about a twenty-five hour period. Okay, so yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday night, uh, the farthest. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, I think I, I think my understanding was uh, semi-correct. Uh, yeah. Hey. Hey. So Demon School, tell us about this game, Brandon. You made a video game. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, I certainly haven't finished making it. <laughs> ah. Alex Jaffe, no one who releases a trailer that doesn't have an exact <laughs> release date at the end has made a video game yet. Indeed. Trust me, Jerry. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> and Jerry. Um, it's it's definitely not done. Uh, tell you about it. Well, um, Based on your Gunsport release schedule, I'm expecting to play it in 2036. Yeah, eventually it'll come. No, this one's got to come out sooner. Um, but I did see from uh, Tribute Games, uh, their, one of their pixel artists um, made a post today, and he was like, because uh, they just put out that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that's coming out today as of recording time. Good-looking game. Already be out by the time everybody's listening to this. I can't believe it's been like 40 years and those turtles haven't grown up yet. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> still teens. A laugh track. <laughs> That's the mutant part. We're mutagenically stuck at teenage. Oh, permatines. He, he was like, uh, ele- across 11 years, we've made seven games from start to finish. And I was like, screw you. <laughs> 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 that's, that's too efficient. Go back home. Uh, they've got an assembly line. They've got a factory. They've got it, uh, they've got it worked I, out. No, I mean, it, just, uh, that's, it's that's a pipeline. What I'm, it's called a pipeline. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, get ye hecked with your efficiency <laughs> get out of here if you ever you ever need to feel good about yourself you ever try this uh if you need you, you need to feel good about yourself and you gotta do it quick you know find out things uh, that are objectively different in tone oh, from the the person you're jealous of right yeah. <laughs> it's like oh i'm not even trying to do the same thing at all uh, their whole thing is they're doing pixel art games that that directly reference exact games you might have played before to maximize the nostalgia factor that's not what i'm trying to do no i know i know it's uh it's it's just still it's a little... a, the mission statement is so clear for them i don't yeah. know i'm not saying that's there's anything wrong with that because i'm an idiot who has thousands of dollars worth of retro video game consoles and stuff here so i like the old games whatever give me that yeah, old like slap I'm probably going to stream that stupid ninja turtles game tomorrow Oh, yeah. I'm going to play it probably tonight. I'll watch that stream. I think what we can take away from this is that demons are more fun than cool. They're more fun than cool. If you want to adapt that Wednesday night thing, just throw my name in the credits. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. it the game's going to be all right. I mean, I'm, I'm, we're working on it. Brent Porter and Michael Kerwin are, are toiling away as are uh, Catherine Manabd and uh, Shane Marks and Lottie May and myself. I'm working a little bit. It's uh, It's hard to make... A whole RPG that's different. And uh, one of the weird challenges is like, we, I was talking to uh, everybody before this about the, someone disparaging the game for trying to copy Persona 5, which is clearly, <laughs> clearly not what we're doing. But um, mm. we, we had, we decided to reference Persona in the press release, despite the game not being influenced by Persona, but rather being influenced by uh devil survivor and yakuza and valkyria chronicles it's the wrong shin megami tensei game we knew that people were gonna uh compare it to persona so we were like let's just get out ahead of it and put that word in there and and so we did it but i think something that's uh that's that's interesting and it does speak to the the difference between what we're doing and what some other people are doing is that influenced by for us means to, we took the spark of of an idea and saw where it would go rather than we are trying to recreate this like Copy we're not it, trying yeah. to in, influenced by doesn't mean and then we did the same thing <laughs> it means yeah we 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 looked at it and we thought well that's a neat idea what if we did something else with it you know like i th- i think that's okay I feel to like do that's so obvious like it's the same as like inspired by like it's not right. you know we are aping this but yeah. we live in a culture now where 
your influences should be so blatantly obvious as to almost just be identical to said influences that, you know, it is sadly unsurprising that people are annoyed that, oh, you said you're influenced by this thing and it doesn't look exactly like this thing. So why did you say that? Or they Even think that it does. It's a perfectly fine thing to say. Uh, <laughs> they say it, it does look exactly like it. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Which is which is wild. St- well, I mean, they say it looks exactly like Persona 1 and 2, really. Um but yeah, it, like the the way the place where it confuses people is we also said it was influenced slash inspired by seventies Italian horror, which is something that the audience is less familiar with, and so they don't they don't see it because it's influenced in the same way as it's influenced by those other things. Where like we look at the lighting and the way they deal with themes and uh, music and stuff, and that was a jumping off point for us from which we did whatever we wanted and people not being as familiar with that as they are with looking at a picture of persona they they have no comment to make about that except apparently it's also influenced by this but they don't they they don't have a a knee jerk reaction to it because they they're not steeped in it so that's also been kind of mm-hmm. interesting well i'm sure we're going to talk about this game a lot more as we approach its uh, eventual release Uh, But for now, we're going to take a quick break so we could all recharge our batteries. Every time I drink water, and I never notice this, I like do a big sigh of relief. I feel like people think it's an affectation, but I really don't notice. So I just took a big gulp of water. Are you an anime character? (laughs) I wish. Because you, you, you take a swig of beer and slam it on the table and go, <laughs> So what you doing? Yes, and I wipe my mouth aggressively. What a day. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to Insert Credits. Time for us to go into the dirt bag. This is the portion mm-hmm. of every episode where we take one of the questions submitted to us by our patrons at patreon.com slash insert credit, where are you listening? Good be amongst their number by going to that address, giving us a few bucks a month, and that uh, will allow you to access the form, which lets you submit the questions, gets you a monthly bonus episode, other little treats and surprises that we deign to drop periodically. Jeffy, I love how your your description of this, just the, the further you get into it, the more it devolves and the less you're able to say it. <laughs> it's like every time you're like... Whoa, whoa, Wait a second, what am I talking about? I love it. It's great. It's part of, part of the show's charm. Oh, it rules. It's no, it's good. I assure you it's completely on purpose. Uh, this week's question <laughs> okay. comes from Kyle, who asks, which famous writer would be best at writing a video game walkthrough? Franz Kafka. <laughs> Kyle Travers from uh, uh, Final Fight Streetwise. Thanks for sending the message. Uh, I thought it was Kyle McLaughlin. Uh, how, how's your brother Cody doing? Is he? Uh, he's still out of jail. <laughs> he broke out. They, did they get him back? That's my reference to uh, to Final Fight Streetwise, uh, a game lots of people love. Everybody loves. What that famous game. video game writer would be best at writing <laughs> game facts? Is that it? Not video game writer, regular writer. So that's why I said. Oh, well, the, uh, well, the, I mean, yeah, famous writer would be good at writing yeah. video game what? <laughs> real yeah. writer. <laughs> One of those real writers. Would be famous at writing video game what? Walkthroughs? Walkthroughs, yes. Mm, I mean, Hemingway. I would prefer a Hemingway. I want the short sentences. I want the polished words. Uh, walk north past... Uh, <laughs> walk north past the big tree. Turn right when the bridge is in view. You know? <laughs> uh, turn right when yeah. you see the bridge. Uh, right? Hey, uh, maybe yeah, maybe Homer, because of all the repet- I think all the repetition can be really helpful for for seeing where you're going and what you're doing. For an RPG, be like, yeah. Th- and then the party fought a- four slimes, and the healer healed, and the warrior fought, and his armor clashed upon him. <laughs> Dawn's rosy fingers crept across the sky, and the players knew they needed to save the game. Uh, not whoever wrote Beowulf. I find, I find uh, Beowulf, Beowulf a, little, a little tough. Uh, Beowulf's good. I would get Salman Rushdie, who famously played every Super Nintendo game while he was under Fatwa. Yeah, he's a, he's, oh. a, he's a video game guy. Nice. I feel like it would be interesting to see how people would react if Jonathan Franzen wrote a video game walkthrough, because it would somehow be tinged with misogyny and also include like a 
sentient poop scene, which I have found in all of his books. I mean, I feel like the, that's not outside the scope of regular game facts. <laughs> yeah. You, you could get him to write the uh, walkthrough for Conqueror's Bad Fur Day. Yeah, there you go. Um, I'd like to see... I don't know that she would be great at it, but for, for whatever reason, I would like to resurrect Sylvia Plath and see what she would do. What would her video game walkthrough look like? She's good at placing you in a location and uh, with a feeling. So, I don't know. I, f- I feel like there, there could be something real weird i think it would be a, a walkthrough that you would uh you would have an experience with the reading of it it might not get you through the game yeah when she talks about the boss battle she'd be like psycho mantis psycho mantis you bastard like she'd get <laughs> yeah. really emotional about it and really yeah, involved it. this would of course be the guide to octoplath traveler <laughs> mm. <laughs> very good yeah eight plus, all, eight all, all the way to the characters were the same yeah, I mean, I hesitate. To, I don't really understand too much about being in walkthroughs because I'm such a pro that I've never used one. Nice. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Oh, man, I use them all the time. I use them all the time. I don't know nothing about nothing. And the good thing about video game walk- walkthroughs is, um, I mean, when you go to GameFAQs, for example, uh, and you're looking at to see what a walkthrough through uh, f- for um, Warlock on the Genesis from 1995 looks like, and then you see that there's a, a Pong mini game that you can get. If you uh, if you enter a certain sequence that they just for some reason they made a, war- a pong mini game in Warlock, that's the kind of stuff I like to see. When you're going in there for for just just for fun, and then you see, wow, they, there's something else here that I had no idea about. Maybe you get your uh, your Sarch secrets. Yeah, that ain't bad. That guy write some secrets. I mean, I I don't know if this is uh, appar- uh, apparent to anyone. Uh... Uh, who watches my videos or anything that I I've always kind of aspired in my video game related writing to invoke sort of the, the, the spirit of a, of a, of a Jorge Luis Borges nonfiction essay. Oh yeah. Borges. Mm-hmm. I overtly reference him many times in, in uh, the, the season one of action button reviews. I would read the heck out of a video game criticisms written by him. I don't know about a walkthrough. Yeah. Though. I'm not, I mean, walkthroughs, nah, he could do a walkthrough. It's just he would be uh, he would be explaining to you like when he explains how uh, you, you receive this technique. Um, you'd be interested to know that you received this technique uh, earlier in the previous uh, game in this series or later in the next one. Uh, I couldn't figure out or whatever. Like he, he would it's a, you know the worst example in the world, though. You know, there it is. Something like that. Miguel de Cervantes would do a pretty fun walkthrough where you'd you'd wind up at the correct point but you'd have a, a goofy time getting there miss he he mm-hmm. of don quixote That'd be fun, yeah i think you know it's 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 a whole like in another life sort of thing right i think in another life a guy like hemingway is a pro gamer let's just let's just call it what it is in another life hemingway would have been some sort of voluntourist posting mm-hmm. pictures of himself building houses in africa or whatever on his mm-hmm. instagram right <laughs> i feel like that sort of guy if uh if reality hit him he might end up day jobbing somewhere like tips and tricks uh, somewhere somewhere like some online uh, trying to think of a of a website that sucks that, that still exists that has that, that has that has walkthroughs on it i'm going to say like ign's yeah. wiki guide walkthroughs like their guides are like incredible and the the writing is is really you know the writing is good uh the structure is good the layout's good the design's good all of that uh i don't want to use ign as the example cuz i think hemingway would probably get hired somewhere not as good as IGN. Though let's just suppose Games Radar. Let's just suppose he'd get hired at IGN and he would be writing IGN walkthroughs with his uh, his crystal clear prose. I that would be I think the best if you're looking for just just the guy to do it. I think that would be that would be the best. Okay, Tim Rogers, it's time. Do you have your topic? Oh, I thought I was going to do it last before the yeah, lightning this, round. Yeah, this is last before the lightning round. We're on a time crunch here. I did have a sort of a question, though. I mean, you know, who who cares? Does anybody else want to ask a question? <laughs> we could go right to the lightning round if you want. I mean, I, I've, I've got a, I, I've, I've got like a bunch of questions I wrote in a document here, and then it's like, oh, they're all just, uh, they're all just ridiculous. Let's just have one. Pick one at random. Uh, he won't. Hang on. 
sorry, I just ended up seeing something that I was. Uh, was it the Pokemon Go gamer girl? <laughs> um, I, that was part of it. Yeah, um, <laughs> she's still here. She's still right here. Okay, I'm gonna just tab away from that. You know, let's just say uh, uh, my question is uh, there, there's no question. Who cares? All right, on to the lightning round. Uh, this week we are playing cool. one of my favorite new games. It's called Game FA Q and A's. In this segment. I've gone to the Q&A's message board for a video game listed on Game FAQs and selected 10 of their most pressing questions. We will do our best to provide snappy answers to each of them, regardless of actual accuracy. This week's game is Dragon Age Inquisition. Oh, Dragon Age. Yeah. Question one. Why does Liliana always say the warden is dead? Because he's Because he died. Because she killed him. Because she can't get over it. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. her one true love. It's tough, yeah. You, you'd keep bringing it up, too, in her position. Uh, question two. Is there any way to make companions mad enough to attack you so you can kick them out of the party permanently? <laughs> yeah, that's definitely something somebody wanted to know. I like the idea that your answer to that is just, ha 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 ha, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Often it is on this show. That's gonna be my answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I, if I'm not if I'm not thinking about Dragon Age, um, yeah, there's plenty of ways to do it. Just uh, I don't know, me- mention mention the new Pokemon game to them and how it how it they reused animations, and then they'll, they'll get mad and leave. That's a good way. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, get them, kick them out of the party. I don't know, man. Just uh, <laughs> just nice. Just, uh, just ignore them. Like, learn to ignore people like everybody else. Is what I would say. Get over it. Question three: How many areas is there? Uh, there's a, there's How a lot. How many of is areas. there? There's not as many zones, but there's a lot of areas. There's too many. There is. I would say there is too many areas. Yeah, that's fair. I, I'm, I'm gonna say there is. Stick with their grammar here. I'm gonna say there is 51 areas at least. And do you ever like somebody like makes a typo? in like an email to you and then you just like re-perpetrate the typo uh do you ever do that like they spell a word wrong all the time all and then the you're like i, Tim, I know, know, I know that you, that, uh, right? I you, hate, you hate when people uh make fun of typos but i i certainly do appreciate that twitter joke where uh the, the person says like and that was the most terrifying moment of my life and then the next line is uh person to whom you misspelled the Grinch as the Grink 20 years ago Grink. was the Grink there. <laughs> uh, I, I still think about that sometimes. It's really stupid. I, I love joke. typos. I'm sorry. I love typos. Grink. The Grink. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand that one. Oh, you'll get Question it. Four. How do I quickly get deft hands fine tools? What? How do I quickly get deft hands fine tools? I, was trying I to keep ma- thinking you're Definitely. saying deft hands. Which yes, is I'm saying just deft a hands. whole deaf tan, <laughs> <laughs> like a deafened tan. No, I'm That's saying, what I keep hearing. I am saying a deft hand, but plural. Deft hand. How, how do I quickly get deft hands fine tools? My answer is just deft tan. <laughs> My deft answer is uh, you you uh, you purchase a, a, a white pony, um, yeah. and, then, and then you got. Uh, Deftan's fine tools. No, you you go to the store and you buy Deftan's finer tools. Then you find uh, Deftan and you <laughs> offer to trade him Deftan's finer tools for his <laughs> fine tools. And he's confused as to why you would want to downgrade, but he gladly gives them gives them to you in trade. Uh, okay, w- that's I thought. I mean, that's that's the real answer, actually. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Tim, you get a point off that one for sure. I, I actually, I'm sorry, I actually Googled that one and read it often. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Question five. I read that one. What am I doing wrong with Iron Bull? Oh, Iron Bull? Hmm. Not drinking it fast enough. I don't know if there's a. Is that, is that, is that Iron Brew and Red Bull mixed together? Is that what that is? That I wouldn't mix right. those. I'd just drink the Red Bull by itself. That'll write your teeth right out. Hmm. Drink them one at a time. Yeah, that's, that's what you're doing. That seems on. like the way to do it. Why does Dragon Age hate on mages so much? Because it's about dragons. It's Dragon Age, not Dragon Mage. Lord. I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, nice. it's, it's right in the name. God. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> like, like, Dragon I, Mage is a different game. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm working on it. It's coming 2023. So check it out. Question seven. <laughs> How do I find this thing? Um, Just keep looking. 
That's about right. Just keep looking. I would, say, I would say ask your mom. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I'll ask your mom. <laughs> I'll ask I'll ask yeah. your mom. Please. I'll ask your mom. <laughs> hey. Is the cliffhanger bad? I mean, it's not mm. very good. It's not <laughs> Stallone's best, that's for it's, sure. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> the, the video game adaptation is better. That's not true. The video game adaptation is incredibly bad. The, the, the skate snowboarding sequence in that thing. John is- Lithgow. It's like it's like I've watched a tool assisted speed run of someone be going through those sequences and even they are like taking so much damage and like barely making it through because it's impossible. So um, the, the game is pretty is pretty rough, especially the Sega CD version. I saw a uh, bus stop ad yesterday that had a big picture of John Lithgow and over it was the title The Old Man. And I was like, shoot, yeah, I guess you're right. He is, the, <laughs> wow. he is an old man. Yeah, now he's That's the old just, man. Just, he's just called the old man now. Yeah, he's they just pr- the old man. Old man Lithgow. He's got a, you know, both him and Gary Oldman uh, played the character of Winston Churchill. That's uh, true. In, in different uh, pieces of media. Yeah. So it looks like he's taken another swing. You know, he saw he saw Gary Oldman win the God Darn Academy Award. Another fight at Gary's Apple. He's like, God darn it, I played Churchill first. I know, I'll play a character <laughs> named The Old Man. <laughs> and that'll that'll get him. He'll. Uh... Gary's like, how did I not book this role? <laughs> yeah. yeah, fires back. <laughs> I gotta fire my agent. In a movie, he's gonna now. Gary Oldman's gonna play John Lithgow in a, a movie, <laughs> in, a Netflix series about the making of, uh, of Third, Third Rock, Rock from the, the Sun. sun. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it's on Netflix now. <laughs> yeah. All right. Wait, oh, it actually is on Netflix already. Is it? They already made it. Oh my so. god. Whoo. I could be wrong. I could be lying. All right. I'll give you the point anyway. Uh, question nine. Does anybody else's her- eyes hurt after playing for a couple of hours? Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, yes. I, I, yeah. So, yeah. I, I, lo- I love to see and or think of a, a youngster encountering this for the first time. Someone should uh, let this young. I'm assuming it's a youngster. I'm just uh, guessing everybody on GameFAQs, uh, like, <laughs> daring to ask a, a, a question on GameFAQs is like, eight or nine you know it's like the size height uh and age of my nephew right uh, so it's uh i just would like the that child to know yeah it is speaking of eyes hurting i have to i have to admit to something that i uh i i said perhaps erroneously on the internet because well, what's your jury? i i uh the the whole of the tomb raider new trilogy was on sale and I, uh, if you have PlayStation Plus, like every game with all the DLC was twenty dollars total. Yeah. And I was like, this is secretly my my favorite AAA game series that I haven't really mentioned about. But I said that having only played the second one and imagining that the other two were probably as good. And uh, so I went back and played the first one, and it is it is absolutely unplayable. I thought it'd be really cool to put in this uh, this shaky cam, which is happening oh, constantly. God. And it, it 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 truly makes me nauseous for. It, I played it for like an hour, and then I was nauseous for three hours. And I tried it again, oh. and it made me nauseous again. Wow. And it's 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 like oh. it is truly unplayable. But I think the TVs were smaller. <laughs> like I got a I got a 65 oh, yeah. inch TV oh, now, yeah. and so like that's what really only on Steam can you take the camera shake off. Basically in VR now. So your answer is yes. Yeah, the answer is yes. Man, TVs were smaller, and and it's very important to know that today's TVs are like literally almost 500 times brighter. That's yeah, not true. Yeah. They are they are much much brighter. They are uh, they are many 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 multiples brighter than TVs were back then. So it is normal for your eyes to hurt when you're playing video games, and video game developers should know that and not have white backgrounds on their UIs by default. Uh, thank you. Question ten: How come I don't receive any more influence? Ooh. Is that, is that, is that, is that a new influenza drug? You gotta buy some, some, uh, za. Buy some pizza. Man, whenever somebody calls pizza za, I just, uh, God, can't talk to worst. that person anymore. Have you ever heard a person say that in real life? I've never heard it. Uh, once. Oh, God. Like, unironically? I'm pretty sure he was not joking. Have you ever heard a person say, I've got a head instead of go? Like, head out no i got a head dude i'll see you guys later got a head oh wow you ever hear that 
I've heard people say I've got a head <gasps> uh, to the X, but I've never heard someone say I've got a head. You've never heard I that? I feel like I've maybe said that in a moment of incredible awkwardness. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Like, that's, I, that's fair. I've definitely been in that situation. Were you like in your office and you just like stood straight up and then said, <laughs> I got a head. Like that. It's probably and more like I was at a party and I said maybe two words and stood in a corner and then just quietly was like, I got a head. And no one heard that because no one was paying attention to me anyway. But I thought I would try it. There's always that point in the sentence where you realize you're not actually talking to someone and you just leave <laughs> off the last couple of words. Is it was it one of those <laughs> cases? Exactly. <laughs> right? It's like, oh, nobody's listening. I'll just, you just leave the... I got to head home now, I think, to feed my dog and eat dinner. And then it's just, you go, I got a head. And it's just like, nobody's looking at you. Like, okay, forget it. And then years, 14 years later, you learn that someone hated you forever because you didn't finish that <laughs> sentence. <laughs> right? It was so rude of you to not finish the sentence you spoke before leaving unnoticed at my wedding reception. We have run out of time in the lightning round. Uh, All right. When, okay. So okay. <laughs> when Brandon made that Area 51 joke earlier, I accidentally gave him 51 points. So Brandon wins this episode. Congratulations. Nice. Wow. Uh, <laughs> this nice. is our job. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, mm. So that's a tip for next time. Uh, trick me by saying large numbers. Uh, Congratulations. <laughs> I won. This is the point of the episode where people make recommendations for things you're enjoying, things you think our listeners should engage in, or mm -hmm. just plugging whatever you happen to be working on. Say, I will never plug what I'm working on. Video game with a bunch of demons in it, or yeah, like a that. website where you recently started working. Uh, this is the point to talk about that. Uh, I'm going to recommend, I was talking about F for fake earlier. I'll recommend it. Oh, yeah. It's good. Um, but then I'll also recommend... Uh, a kind of um, symphonic black metalish album by a band called Desiccation, which for, <laughs> for some reason they spelled with one S and two C's. So uh, wow. uh, that's, that's nice. what they did. I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know yeah, either. Is it better or worse for SEO? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, and they have they have a new album called Cold Dead Earth, which on their band camp is misspelled as Cold Death Earth. <laughs> so... Oh, that uh, owns, got a dude. Spelling things oh, going on, but uh, they're pretty good. Listen to it. it. They're from Sacramento. I'm gonna send something uh, to the Discord chat here that that I think Brandon will enjoy. I like stuff that I enjoy. It's it's, it's from my lunchtime today. Uh, it's a All it's right. a photograph of from my lunchtime. Uh, uh, here you go. What do you think of this lunchtime photograph? It's pretty good, isn't it? Mm hmm. Yeah, you're starting yeah. to watch that TNG <laughs> Star yeah, well, Trek. Yeah. It's it's a picture of the title card wow. from the Star Wars: The Next Generation season one, episode six. <laughs> uh, this Trek. episode title is "Where No One Has Gone Before," and I have it paused. And as I'm resuming the video in Paramount Plus, the the episode title listed above the timeline is Star Trek: The Next Generation, where no one have gone before. <laughs> <laughs> Really good. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, it's it's pretty good, I think. I'm not going to recommend Star Trek because I I don't have enough experience with it. Though I have a, I was telling Brandon. Uh, I love that kind of typo. I decided I decided to start watching uh, Star Trek, um, and uh, I I have adopted a, a sort of a policy. Uh, uh, like I've never seen a full. I had never seen a full episode of Star Trek. Now I have seen uh, every currently existing episode. I started with Strange New Worlds because I was going to watch each episode as it aired. Because uh, I need a nighttime show because uh, uh, my my girlfriend wakes up very early. Um, and so she goes to bed quite early. X-Files is on Hulu, by the way, if you want another nighttime show. Um, oh, I, I I watched like a couple seasons of X-Files a couple years ago. Um, okay. But yeah, I, I've been watching. I, I watched Star Trek Discovery. Uh, and then when the, a new episode of Star Trek Strange New Worlds is out, I watched Star Trek Strange New Worlds. And I'm having a very interesting time uh, with that, uh, though I am watching The Next Generation during my lunch times. So nice. that's how I'm doing it. And I think that's The Next Generation Season 1 is as bad as people uh, told me it was. That many yeah. people told me to skip it. Um, I am still having a pretty good time, though. Where No One Has Gone Before was an okay episode. Yeah, I mean, you got Jonathan Frakes being James T. Kirk for no reason. So, I mean, that's kind of fun. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, and I'm just overall having a, a good time with stupid Star Trek shows. That Discovery is pretty weird. I don't know. Even I, a non-Star Trek knowing person, am watching that show and thinking, oh, this show's weird. It's wacky. It's It's got some stuff going on in it. Having a good time, though. 
Allegra? Well, other than reading my three articles thus far on the dailybeast.com. Three whole articles. Three whole articles. So proud of myself. That's One good. I'm going to recommend. Thanks, guys. Uh, I'm going to recommend something a little less consumerist. Let's uh, Whoa. stop looking at a screen for a second. And here's what I'm going to recommend that I just did. Mm-hmm. I put my tofu in the freezer. Mm-hmm. Ooh. And then I thawed it, and it was the best freaking thing. Oh, I've done that. Have you done that? Yeah, it's good. Frozen tofu is a good way to go. It's so good. It really absorbs stuff after that, too. Yeah. yeah it's like soup that way. Soup's better when you leave it in the freezer. for. Is that, is that true? <laughs> yeah, and like, let it thaw. I've done done it before. It's nice. really good. I took it out. I thawed it, and then I like sautéed it. I made some brown rice, had some broccoli, put some soy sauce. I had a little, like, I have this... um nori seasoning it was so good because the texture makes it all spongy are you a, are you a vegetarian yeah um i'm a pescatarian so i, oh, I don't know fish. I, I, I don't know what that is i'm just kidding <laughs> I know what that is. oh man yeah okay. i knew someone who was like i'm a flexitarian and i was like that means you just sometimes you don't eat meat i'm a vegetarian yeah. and sometimes i'm not or i am not a vegetarian and sometimes i am who's to say i'm a flexitarian <laughs> Is that that kind of person? Yeah, it was that kind of person. Oh, good recommendation um, is don't call yourself a flexitarian. Just call yourself <laughs> a, another you're just, recommendation. You're just you're just, a, you're just a guy at that point, bro. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> talking directly to a, a guy I know. So uh, thank you. <laughs> I have some recommendations. I'd like to recommend that if you're listening to this show on any platform where you can subscribe to or review podcasts, that you engage with us in that way. Like Nick W one two three four five six seven eight nine did, who wrote, <laughs> "These guys know a lot about video games." Came for Tim, staying for Jaffe. You can also go to patreoncom credit where you could become a patron to submit your own topics, listen to monthly bonus episodes. Interesting choice of a thing to read. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I, I'm, I'm just reading them as they come in. I, I picked right. this one absolutely random. Okay. Uh, you get other exclusive content as well. Uh, you could also join us on our community, forums.insertcredit.com, or follow us on Twitter at Insert Credit, or search for Insert Credit on YouTube to watch this show in its YouTube form. The show is edited by Esper Quinn, <laughs> with original music by Kurt Feldman. I'm Alex Jeffy. Kay Field. Uh, I'm T- I'm Tim Rogers. I'm Brandon Sheffield. And I'm Allegra Frank. And you have now saved your game. So you said earlier, if you listen to this podcast on any platform, uh, you should subscribe and all this stuff. Um, I think that's that's a nice thing to say. But if the person is listening to it on a donut block pa- platform from Super Mario Brothers 3, <laughs> they should probably <laughs> <laughs> jump off of the platform uh, and land on a more uh, steady ground <laughs> before they uh, decide to uh, subscribe or leave a review is what now I would say. Now that's my <laughs> kind of joke. Otherwise, they're going to die. <laughs>